Okay, so we'll get cracking. So uh, we started talking on yesterday uh, about the situation. Um, I'm not there, sorry. About the situation where you don't have initial, it's not an initial value problem, but a boundary value problem. So a boundary value problem uh, is something where you know kind of what's happening at start and the end. So this would be the start, this is the end. Rather than an initial value problem where you, you have say the initial displacement and you have the initial velocity. So how do we handle these? So the first thing is you reduce the two first orders. So you let V be the derivative and you end up with something like this. And then the thing is that, okay, you have the initial value of Y but you have no idea of the initial value of the derivative. Okay, so that's where we're stuck. So what we do actually is, um, if it's what's called a linear problem, um, which basically I think means that um, you have functions of X multiplied by derivatives added together equal to a function of X. Uh, so you don't have like um, Y of X squared, you don't have dy dx squared, something like that. Uh, these kind of problems. There's, uh, we've got a relationship between something we get down here. So we guess a starting slope. So uh, this is a this is a starting slope. Just take a guess, and we take a shot. We try and get the value that we're supposed to get at the end, but we get y a. So this, uh, so we guess a starting slope and we get a, this is a, a shot, shot at y1. We'll draw a picture of this below. And then you take another guess. So this is a, another starting slope. And you get a second shot. at y1. Now in theory, you could fluke out and hit it because uh, we want to end up with at x1, the y value is y1. So it turns out that there is a, a linear relationship between these and uh, I'll show you what this means with a graph, with a picture. Now usually um, we think of an, an undershot and an overshot, uh, but you don't have to have an overshot and an undershot. It just makes a little more sense when you do. So, um, so here I think we're going to start with um, x equal to zero for some reason, which we we might just throw this in. So this is saying that x zero is zero. Okay, so we are say here is our starting position. So this is x equal to zero, y equal to, I think y zero, I better just check above. Yeah, y zero. And say we're aiming for this point over here, which is x equal to x one. This is a, a final x value and we're trying to hit y one. Okay, so we basically, we take a shot so um, am I starting with an undershot? Yeah, we're going to start with an overshot. So um, let's say we aim straight at the final point. So, uh, well, it's difficult for me to do this here, but imagine just shooting from zero Y zero to X one Y one, you just shoot straight at it. So aim straight at it. Now the, so this is supposed to aim straight at it. Okay. So this is taking a initial slope V of VA, okay? So basically what we're saying is we run the simultaneous differential equations, the system up the top of the page now with a starting Y value of Y zero and a starting V value of VA. And you can get, you, you can come up with VA however you want, but you, we could do in a question, we know Y zero, we know Y one, we know X one, we could just do rise over run here. And we, we do our uh, numerical method. 
And suppose it comes up something like this. So this is, we'll call this an overshot. Okay, so this is the, at the X value that we want to finish with, you get Y A. So this is called a, an overshot. Now we'll say, okay, let's take a second shot. And maybe this time, rather than kind of aiming straight at it, we'll just aim with an initial slope of zero. Now I'll draw it as an initial slope of zero, but no, maybe we will draw it kind of, no, we won't do that. It might be a bit confusing. So we'll try a different starting slope, try this starting slope and see, can we hit the, the, the X, the Y1. So this is a, a, a second starting slope. We run our numerical method, be it Euler's method, Heinz method, and maybe it comes up here. So we're trying to hit Y1 and we kind of even overshot and an undershot. So we'll just uh, see this. So suppose VA overshots the mark and gets YA, VB undershots and gets YB. Now, what you have to do is you have to increase the lower one by a certain proportion. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by a proportion. So we now this actually looks like 50 50, but uh, don't mind that. So we're going to look at this proportion. Let's just call it P as a percentage of this, say Q. So it could be 50 50 or something like that. And now what we do is we take the lower slope, V0, sorry, VB. And we look at the difference between VA and VB. That's a difference in initial slopes. And we increase VB by a proportion of the difference. And the proportion is exactly the proportion on the right. So maybe um, the P's and Q's are kind of confusing things here a little bit. I might uh, go off and draw another picture on a whiteboard. So yeah, that's this is the, the red bit. So actually I'll write down something um, a bit more permanent on the bottom. That's gonna be a formula that we're going to use. Um, now the formula that I write down is slightly different to the one on the next page, but don't worry about that. But we'll see that they're actually the same formula. Uh, are they? Yeah, so I guess um, the correct V0 would be the lower slope that proportion which the so the the p is just equal to y1 minus yb and q is ya minus yb and a proportion of the difference of the slopes va minus vb that is a formula on the next page now how can we be sure that they are in fact the same formula i think if you just multiply them out um You'll, you'll get that they're actually the same. And uh, maybe that's something to worry about a little bit later. So the, the formula on the next page looks different. Um, I suppose you could just swap the A's and the B's. And does this formula look the same if you swap the A's and the B's? Um, maybe it doesn't. We will, uh, okay, we're, we're, gonna, we're just gonna put some numbers on this just to explain a little bit better. And then we'll come back to this and maybe we'll try the two different formulas. So this formula here that I want to write down. Um, so V0 equal to VB plus Y1 minus YB over YA minus YB times VA minus VB. So we're going to try that formula and also the formula that's on the next page here. OK, so uh, let's go off and find something first. All right, so let's put some hard numbers on this. So um, let's suppose, and um, because it's one that actually we'll, we'll probably see, no, let's, yeah, let's just make things very nice and easy. So let's take a, uh, we're going from x equal to zero to x equal to five. 
and suppose the initial point, let's say, is uh, x equal to zero, y equal to 10. And then the point we're trying to hit, say, for argument's sake, is x equal to five, y equal to 40. Okay, so we'll take two shots. Um, I don't know if I can be consistent with the color. I think the, no, I can't, I don't have all the colors to be consistent. So I'll just use green for both of them. So suppose we try a slope of, um, so the rise over run here would be kind of 30 over five, which is six. So we try a slope of six and we end up here. So this is VA equal to six. And for argument's sake, let's say we get up to V60. Okay, and then we try a different starting slope. So we reduce the slope to say um, two. And for argument's sake, suppose we come in at 530. Okay, so in terms of the proportions, uh, say uh, just as a distance, this is 10 and this is 30. So the, the proportion, uh, uh, the undershot is kind of one, or the, what I wanna say is it's kind of one third of the way up. Do you see what I mean? So you got 30, 40, 60. So if you go from 30 to 40, that's 10 out of 30 to 60. So the proportion here is kind of in terms of what I was writing a second ago, P over Q is one third. So you're going one third of the way up. Now what you look at is the difference of the two slopes, which is four. So uh, the difference between the two slopes, VA minus VB is equal to four. And we should do a slope, if we wanna hit the 40, is that we have a slope that's kind of one third of the way between two and six. So I'll just write that down. So need initial slope, one third of way between two and six. So we should go to two, the initial slope, the one below that undershots, plus one third of the difference, which is four. So we end up with uh, two plus four thirds. Um, that's basically, so what are we talking here? Six, ten, ten thirds, is it? Which is approximately 3.333. So the slope should be one third the way here. And if you run that slope, you're guaranteed to hit it on the nose. Now, what we're going to look at here is the two formulas. Um, because I have two formulas and um, I didn't really use any formula here, but essentially I did. So just let's make sure that they both work. So let's write down all our, our data as such. So we have the thing we're trying to hit, y1 is equal to 40. VA is equal to 6. And where it ends up hitting is YA. So the VA equal to 6, the initial slope of 6 ended up hitting at 60. And the uh, initial slope of two ended up hitting at 30. So there's two formulas, one I wrote on one page, one then which is formula 1.51. I just wanna make sure we get the same thing that we get the, the 10 over three. So the first formula was V of zero is equal to the lower slope plus Y1 minus YB over YA minus YB times VA minus VB, which would be the lower slope is two. What we're trying to hit is 40. Take away the YB, which is the 30. That's the 10 out of three. So YA is um, YA 60 minus 30. So that's the 10 out of 30, that's the one third, times the difference in the slopes, six minus two, we will get 10 over three. So the formula that I wrote down worked. Now, what about the other one? So the other one is a slightly different formula, but I think it just uh, changes the role of VA and VB. So the other formula says V0 is equal to VA plus Y1 
yeah, uh, minus y a, y b minus y a times v b minus v a. And we just want to make sure we get the same thing. So this starts with a bigger slope, the big slope of six, and it's going to reduce it. Um, so the y one minus yeah, so it's going to instead of uh, starting at the bottom and doing one third of the difference, it's going to start at the top and do two thirds of the difference. So it's going to be the same thing. So y1 here is 40 over 60. Yb is 30 minus y is 60. So there you're getting um, two thirds. And then vb is two, va was six. So this looks like six plus two thirds of minus four. So starting with the small number and adding one third of the difference, it's the same as starting at the big one and taking away two thirds of the difference. Yeah, so you, you can kind of show that these will give you the same thing. Yeah, so what I like to do is kind of come up with the formula just by looking at my picture. Which is what I did down the bottom. But you can just use the formula. And the thing about the formula is that um, it always works, even if you have two undershots or two overshots. You don't have to have an undershot and an overshot. Basically, that there's there's a relationship between these slopes and the y values that everything is kind of in proportion. So the y's are in proportion to the v's, or rather the difference of the y's is proportional to the difference of the v's. And that means that this formula down the bottom works. So the final shot here with the formula down below. Will hit it on the nose. So the red thing is your solution. It has the correct initial point, it has the correct final point, and well, whatever is going on in between as best you can with oil or hoin or whatever. So this is the idea. Um, to so this the big thing for this would be, yeah, it'll be in both of the final assessments, is to get your head around it. Now, the peculiar thing about this is that two shots is enough. And that's because the equation is very, very nice. When the equation is nonlinear, we have to do something else. But this is the, the, basic, the basic story. OK, so I think we'll do um, an exam question. So consider a rod of length six meters, uninsulated along its length. So it's, it's, there's heat transfer between the rod and the air, but in steady state. OK. Um, because suppose the air temperature is 20, the heat transfer coefficient is this, and the boundary conditions are 10 and 70, the temperature then will be given as the solution of this boundary value problem. So you see you have the start is this one, and the end is this one. We don't have the um, initial value of the slope. So we're going to do step size of two. Now that's kind of, you know, it's ridiculous. We're just looking at the technique. Obviously, you don't do this by hand, you do it on the computer anyway. Uh, and we'll do an Euler shooting point method. Now you, you can do Heinz method, whatever, um, but I think in assessment, I'll just ask for Euler. But I, if you're doing it, you know, to be more accurate, you do it Heinz method or even Runge Kutta methods. So first of all, a sketch. And I think we'll do um, two sketches if we can. The important one is the graph and then maybe just a, a picture of what's actually going on. So the important one is, We've got T of X here, that's temperature. Against distance along the beam. Um, right. Um, what am I doing? T of zero is 10. So the temperature of X equals zero is 10. So this is the point zero, 10. That's on the curve. And the other one is at six, x equal to six, it goes to 70. Now I want to be kind of flexible here what I end up with for my picture. Okay, so we've got the start point and the end point. And we'll just, just draw a picture here. Um, this is probably unnecessary, but just what are we actually looking at here? We've got a six meter rod that is kept 
at a fixed temperature both sides. So what have we got here? Here we've got 10, presumably Celsius, and 70, and there's an air temperature, 20 in between. So what we'd expect is that there'll be some, well, it's difficult to know, but basically what you're going to have is um, certainly up near the 70. So after the 70, you know, it's going to be cooler because of the air temperature and also the fact that it has to hit 10 on the other side. And um, so it should have a, a U shape, uh, I think is what we're going to look for. Okay. So uh, we have to write this as two first order differential equations because we, you know, we're going to be doing Euler's method essentially. So how do we do that? Well, we let V be the first derivative. I think in context now, this would be called a temperature gradient. Um, now I want to write it that that's my differential equation for T, but I also want differential equation for this V. So I differentiate both sides of this with respect to X and I get DV dX equal to the second derivative of temperature with respect to distance. And, but I can solve for the second derivative of temperature from the differential equation at the top of the screen. But the second derivative of temperature is equal to, now I can either do minus 0 0.02, um, which is fine, or I could have minus 0 0.02, but then multiply in the minus. I think that's a clever thing to do. So you end up with plus 0 0.02 temperature minus 20. That's probably a clever thing to do. So we have dt dx is equal to V with the initial value of temperature, initial in terms of distance rather than time. And then the other equation is that the second derivative of temperature, which is the same as dV dx, is equal to the second derivative of temperature, which is on the right there, 0 0.02 times T minus 20. But I don't know the initial value of this, but this is a, a what's called a linear differential equation. And that means that if I take two shots, I can kind of average out the two slopes and uh, it'll it basically work. Um, it's probably worth putting in the, the steps here because we're going in steps of two. So we're gonna go to two, to four, to six. So we're just gonna know what's happening at two and four essentially. Zero, we know it has to be 10. Six, we know it has to be 70. We're just going to find the temperature at two other points. And because the step size is so big, it's not going to be very accurate. Now, um, I've got uh, a reasonable slope to start with here. I'm saying VA equal to 10. And that is me shooting at it directly. Because if I look at the, the rise over the run, so the rise here is 10 to 70. That's 60. And the run is six, so the rise over the run is 10. So if I aim straight at it, the slope would be 60 over six, which is 10. So my first shot is to take a slope of 10, that is an initial value of V of 10. And let's see what happens. So we're gonna shoot with this slope, I'm just gonna go, how we're we doing for space here. Right, there should be enough space, because I only, I, I don't have to go very far. Okay, so let's do the next temperature, um, T1. So the next temperature is equal to the previous temperature. Now, the previous temperature is the starting temperature is 10. So step size is two times derivative of temperature and the derivative of temperature is just above is V. So it should be the previous V and I'm starting with this previous V of 10. So I get 10 plus 20, I get 30. Okay, now I'm going to have to calculate the next V value. So the next V value is equal, and obviously you can do Heinz meter or whatever you want here. We'll just keep it Euler up. So the next V is the previous V, which we're chancing arm with 10, plus the step size is two times the derivative of V, which is just above 0 0.02 temperature minus 20. That should be the previous temperature and the previous temperature was 10. Okay. 
Okay, we'll um, throw this into the calculator and see what we get. 10 plus 0 0.02 times minus 10. It comes in as 9.8. Hmm. Well, we'll just keep going. Um, is there anything, anything interesting to say here? No, uh, we'll go again. So T2, so that's what this is. What This is our approximation to what's happening with the temperature at two. So T2 is the previous temperature, which is 30, plus the step size, which is two times, is it not 9.6? Uh, it is 9.6, thank you. Thanks very much. I forgot about the two. Thanks for that. So times the previous slope, which is 9.6, which I think will give us uh, 49.2, but I'll just check. Yeah, 49.2. And this is our estimate of what is going on at four. We need to find V2, which is the next value of the V. Uh, which is the previous V, which is 9.6, plus the step size, which is two, times the derivative of V, which is 0 0.02 T, must be the previous T, which was 30, minus 20, which is equal to, I'm a little bit nervous of that, and I'll explain why. Ten. Maybe we'll just keep going. There's something I'm, I'm a little worried about the equations, but we'll just keep on going and see what happens. Um, and then we have finally, what, what's our estimate of what's going on at 60? T3 is equal to the previous temperature, which is 49.2, plus the step size, which is two, times the previous V, which is, um, where am I going with 10? Oh, it is, it's just, it is just 10, it's just a fluke. So that comes out to 69.2. Okay, so this is our approximation of what's going on at six. It's a pretty good shot actually, because I'm trying to hit 70 and I've hit 69.2, unless I've made some stupid mistake. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep on going for the time being, I think we're okay. So this shot, now I'll exaggerate it, but it's, it's actually really, really close. Um, now, if we look at what happens to the slope, it kind of jumps around a bit. So maybe we'll just, uh, we won't pay much attention. To it. But anyway, it's an undershot, just about. It's actually very close. So we're, we're gonna take a bigger slope. Uh, we're gonna try with 15. So initial V value of 15. And do the same thing. So going again, so the next T value is the initial T value, which is, we're going back to start, the very initial value of T was 10, plus the step size is two, plus the previous value of V, and now we're trying 15. And that gives us 40. So this is our estimate of what's going on at two. Our next V value is the previous V value, 15 plus step size times slope, 0 0.02, temperature minus 20. So the previous temperature was 10 minus 20. And we get 15 plus 0 0.04 times minus 10. At 14.6. Okay. And we go to the next temperature. T2 is the previous temperature, which is 40, plus step size is 2 times previous V, which is 14.6. Let's see, what we get 40 plus 2 by 14.6 is 69.2. Now we're clearly going to be way over with this shot because we're already nearly at 70 and then 
um, we need to get V2, so we need to write a bit smaller. V2 is equal to the previous V value, which is 14.6, plus step size, which is two, times slope of V, which is 0 0.02, times um, previous T, uh, the, pre we're at the second bit, so the previous T is the T1, which is 40, minus 10, equal to, let's see what we get, 14.6 plus 0 0.04. Uh, times 30, I get 15.8. And then finally, T3 is equal to the previous T value, which is 69.2, plus the step size is two times the slope of T, which was V, and the previous V is 15.8. So I end up with 69.2 plus two by 15.8. 100.8, a big overshot. So we'll go back to the, the picture in a second. And we'll write down the various um, symbols in that. Okay. So we'll go back, the previous thing for a picture. So we took the shot with a slope of 10 and it was a just a bare undershot. And then we took a much bigger slope, which was 15, and we did an overshot. You can still use the formulas if you overshot twice or undershot twice. That's no problem. OK. Let's go on to the next page and write down some numbers. So uh, we had, we took an initial slope of 10. And that gave us uh, an ending Y value of, I think it was 69.2, yeah. And then we tried initial slope of 15 and we got uh, an ending value of 100.8. And the target, which we would call uh, using the formula, it'd be Y of X1. equals uh, 70. Okay, so um, I can use, I, I'll use the actual formula up the top of the previous page. I like kind of averaging it out, but maybe for most people, they'll just use the formula. So for the use the formula, you have to rec you have to get your, what slope you used, say VA is 10, and what Y value did you end on, 69.2. Then your second shot, you have a starting slope, say here 15, and what Y value you ended on, say 100.8. And then you've got your target. So then you can use the formula that says V is zero. So I'll just use the, the formula on the previous page that will be given to you in the assessment. Uh, VA plus Y of X1 minus YA divided by YB minus YA divided or uh, times VB minus VA. So we should be able to put all these numbers in. So VA is 10 plus Y of X1 is 70 minus YA is 69.2 divided by YB is 100.8 uh, minus YA is 69.2 times VB, which was 15, minus VA, which is 10. Now, in terms of what I was talking about before, the 70 minus 69.2 is the proportion, that's the little distance uh, between the undershot and what you're trying to hit as proportion of the thing underneath is the difference between the, the undershot and the overshot times the difference in the starting slopes, which was five, and so, this is the same kind of thing we were doing before. So we'll just throw this into the calculator. We'll use five significant figures. So I have 10 plus 70 minus 69.2, but 100.8 minus 69.2 times five. And I get 10.127. Now, if I use the, the fraction form of that, whatever it is, it's something like uh, 800 over 79 um, and run it, I will end up with exactly 70. Now, maybe we, we may or may not see, we'll, we, because we've rounded here, we'll have a little bit of rounding error. So let's uh, give it a go anyway. 
So we, we know the slope, the, the correct slope. And so we need to just run it again. So we run it again. So the, the first t value after the initial one is the initial t value plus the step size times the initial slope. And now we know 10.127 is the, is the one. So this is 10 plus two times 10.127. I get 30.254. Then V1 is equal to the 10.127 plus two times the slope of V is 0 0.02 times previous temperature, which is um, 10 minus 20. So this is 10.127 plus 0 0.04 times, looks like minus 10, uh, 9.727. And actually you only have to calculate the next line. I will keep going, but actually you can stop here because you know it's gonna hit 70 or within rounding error. We'll keep going though. So T2 then is the previous T value, which is 30. 254 plus the step size is two times the previous slope is 9.727. And I get 30.254 plus two by 9.727, 49.708. So that's us done. And we'll just keep going to show um, what's going on here. Um, so, I think the next v-value we'll do here, v2 is equal to the previous v-value 9.727 plus step size of two times derivative of v.02, uh, temperature minus 20, previous temperature is T1, 30.254 minus 20. And this is equal to what? 9.727. Plus 0 0.04 times uh, 10.254. So I get some rounding here, 10.137 again. Oh no, that's a different thing. This is a bit of rounding here. 10.137. And then I get final temperature T3. We, we need to hit 70 is Previous temperature, 49.708, plus twice previous V, 10.137, which is equal to, so 49.708 plus two times 10.137. And I get 69.982. And why is that not on the money? because we rounded there and we rounded there. So that means that this thing is only approximately 70. Obviously it's not far off. Um, if you put it, if you used, you know, on the computer, however many decimal places you use that, I'm not sure is it kind of eight or 16, you, you wouldn't see much of a difference. Okay, so, um, yeah, so this, yeah, so we, we kind of have a final answer as such. This is maybe what we'll put here. So we have temperature distance, x equal to two, x equal to four, x equal to six. And we have initially is 10. And then after two, we have 30 point. So I'll just write 10 here. I'll write 30 point three, let's just do three significant figures, and then 49.7. And finally, to three significant figures, you do have it correct at 70. It's close to a straight line, but not exactly a straight line. And we'll, we can talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. What, why does it have this kind of funny shape? Um, yeah, so I mean, it's something we'll be doing in our next lab. So hopefully we'll start getting your head around what's actually going on there. Uh, I think we're just gonna do another example though.
for, for now anyway. So yeah, you, you take, you don't know the initial slope, so you guess. You take a guess, you take a shot, you record the guess of the initial slope and where you ended up. Then you take a second guess, uh, you record that slope and where you end up and you average those two slopes out using the formula here. And that slope that you end up with is the one that will hit exactly what you want to hit. Okay. That's basically it. So here is a, another example. Simply sported beam. Okay, so we've got a, a differential equation. And again, we have the moment M at zero and six. So that's about, we know, we, we know at, at X equal to zero and X equal to six, what we want. We don't have the initial value of the slope. So we'll write this as two first orders. So we let V equal to uh, the first derivative. We differentiate both of these. And what happens is, well, we have the second derivative m is right there. That's what the differential equation is. So we know what dv dx is. So we have an equation for m is dm dx is equal to v together with the initial. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Oh yeah, no, so the dm dx equal to v, that's the differential equation for m. So we put the initial value of m there, m of zero equal to zero. And then we do uh, another one, dv dx. It is the second derivative, which is equal to minus 10 e to the power of x minus three squared. But we do not know initial value of v. We don't know that. Okay, so um, this is kind of just going through it kind of quickly. And this would have been done on Excel or VBA. So starting with, now do we have a picture? Um, not a very good picture. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to draw down below. So uh, I appreciate you don't have all the same colors. Maybe I'll try and stick the colors at least you might have. So starting with an initial slope of zero. So that actually corresponds to shooting exactly where you're supposed to be going. So I'm going to go down the bottom. Let's have a, a picture of that. So uh, again, I appreciate you don't have all the colors. So maybe we'll just say that this one is the moment. Very good drawing for me. So that is the pending moment. Now that's the, uh, that's what we end up at the end. So this shot that we, we spoke about above, so maybe we'll, we'll just say, okay, what have you got here for the moment you have the initial point is x equal to zero m equal to zero and the final point that you're aiming to get is x equal to six m also equal to zero so we started with um a shot where you just shoot straight at it now i i think yeah it was called va equal zero so that's the first one you shoot exactly at it so you shoot directly at it and it ended up at minus 53.17. So this one went down here, undershot. So this was x equal to six, m equal to, I'll just do two significant figures here, minus 53. So that was the first shot and undershot. The second shot used a slope of 10. Now, where did 10 come from it doesn't actually matter. You can, you can be anything, just something different from zero. I think if you make it too close to zero again, though, you, you can, the rounding error becomes more significant, maybe. So just going to five or 10 or 20 is good. So this one, a starting slope of 10 would look something like this. This is VB equal to 10 
And this ended up, so you have the initial value of V is equal to 10, the initial value of M is equal to zero, and you do Euler's method on the system above. And this ended up with an overshot of 6.8. So this went, so X equal to six, Y or the M 6.8. So an undershot and an overshot. And now we average them out using that formula. And hopefully that's the same formula that I've been using. It's slightly different. Yeah, it's the same one. So um, this number here is our like our YB. That's our second shot. This is our first shot, YA. And then we have our target, which is zero. This is your Y of X1 for that formula above. So the formula there is the one that's given to you. Um, now you might be wondering why am I changing to the big V, but actually for bending moments, the derivative of moment means something, it's shear. And they use a big V for that. So you can use a little V, it doesn't make any difference, but the, the derivative of M respect to X means something. So using the formula, so VA is zero. M of six uh, is kind of our target. Oh yeah, so that's okay. I mean, that's that's kind of written there. So Y of X one is our target is M of six equals zero. So that does go in there eventually. We have the YA, the undershot, the minus 53, that's there two times. The YB, the overshot of 6.8 is there. And then the VB minus VA, the second slope minus the first slope, 10 minus zero is there. Um, and you, so that means that the, the, the shear you're supposed to have is 8.86. So if we look at the, the final shot is the, this black one. So this is the V of zero, uh, approximately, let's say uh, 8.9. And that, if you run it with, that looks like six significant figures, it gets to like 10 to the minus five, which is very, very close to zero, which it's supposed to do. Um, if you use the fraction, you'll, you know, you'll get closer and you'll still have rounding error, but you get very, I mean, 10 to minus five is very small difference there. Uh, and you end up with this. And um, when you're doing the moment, it's interesting also to plot the shear force and you get something like, so the shear force is the, you can probably, well, we don't have to worry about it too much for, for here. Okay, so this is uh, the linear shooting method. Um, I'll tell you when you can use the, the linear shooting method. If you don't have to know, you don't have to be able to say, oh, can this differential equation take it or not? Um, let's look at the next page, what are we looking at? Oh yeah, so the next story anyway, is going to be what if the thing is not linear? Then the thing about those slopes being all in proportion doesn't work. So for example, This one here, because it's got t to the four, so this is, and in fact, other terms as well. So this has got t to the four rather than t to the one. This implies that this equation is called, is nonlinear. So all the nice stuff, so uh, all the nice kind of theory doesn't work. Um, so what you have to do here um, is you can't just take two guesses. What you actually have to do is just try loads of different things. And what's going to take loads of different things for you is going to be Excel. And obviously you've seen the gold seek before. Um, so this is uh, what we'll be doing the next day. So we'll basically be saying, okay, Excel, please. Um, pick an initial slope that allows me to hit a final temperature of 200 and it'll do its thing to do the sound effect and then uh, it's going to work and we'll get a picture. And we'll talk a little bit more about that picture, I think on um, that Monday, Tuesday. Okay, so we'll see uh, some of you um, uh, for your assessment on Friday. The rest of you will see on Tuesday. Look.